Good day, everybody. My name is Conrad, SA Guide. Thank you for joining me again on another exciting day. In this episode, on my series about Pretoria, I go a bit into the history of South Africa to give you a little bit of background. In today's video, I will be visiting the Voortrekker Monument on Heritage Day, which is also known as our National Bry Day in South Africa, the 24th of September. Today, we celebrate everybody's natural heritage and celebrate our cultures and traditions together. The Voortrekker Monument is situated in the south of Pretoria. It's probably the most iconic historical monument. It was built to commemorate the Voortrekkers who left the Cape Colony between 1835 and 1854 to start their own colonies after the Cape Colony in the south got overtaken by the British. We are at the Voortrekker Monument on the Heritage Day. 24 of uh, September. So back then, together with the then President of the South African Republic, Paul Kruger, there were discussions to build a monument in 1888. But the building only started in 1937 when the idea was brought into fruition on what is now known as Monument Hill. Yeah, here we are at the Voortrekker Monument, which is a little bit on the south of Pretoria. It was uh, built in uh, started in uh, 1938 and uh, it was uh, inaugurated in 1949 and was to commemorate uh, the food truckers who has moved from the Cape Colony uh, up to the Transvaal Colony. Yeah, so the food tracker monument is uh, 40 meters high and uh, also 40 meters wide, 40 meters in length. And it's got a very good uh, lookout point yeah, over the rest of Pretoria. On each four corners of the monument, there is a statue of a Voortrekker leader. Pieter Tief, Andries Pretorius and Hendrik Potgieter. And the other represents all the other two Voortrekker leaders. Visitors to the monument enter through a black wrought iron gate with an asahai or spear motif. Walking up the stairs, you are met by a statue of Anton van Gogh of a Voortrekker woman and her two children. This paying homage to the strength of the Voortrekker woman. This bronze uh, statue here is to commemorate all the women and children who suffered during the Anglo Boer War. This building is uh, made of granite. The monument is surrounded by a nature reserve. Yeah, from here you have a pretty good view over the city. Still just a little bit misty. And there you have the city center of Pretoria on the left. And uh, right across there's the Union buildings on the Mankis Kop. And there's also the Telkom telecommunications tower. The main entrance to the monument leads to the Hall of Heroes. This massive space contains the marble historical frieze, which is the largest marble frieze in the world. There are 27 base relief panels depicting the history of the Great Trek. It illustrates key historical scenes. In the center of the floor is a large circular opening 
through which the cenotaph hall can be viewed. On the cenotaph it says, Ons for you South Africa, we're for you South Africa in Afrikaans. The monument is built in such a way that every year at 12 o'clock on 16 December a ray of sunlight shines right through an opening at the top of the dome of the monument onto the cenotaph, onto the words. The walls with the wagons is built from decorative granite with 64 ox wagons in the same style as foot trackers used to camp out in the wild. 64 was also the same amount of wagons that were used during the Battle of Blood River. Here, outside of the monument, is an indigenous garden. They also tried to depict the Great Trek in the garden. The Great Trek was a northward migration by the Voort trekkers seeking to live beyond the British colonial administration. You might wonder, who are these Voort trekkers I am talking about? They are the Dutch descendants of the families who arrived in the Cape Colony from the Netherlands in uh, today's Cape Town between 1652 and the 1850s. They were mostly farmers who lived with their families independently of the land. These families left the Cape Colony in big groups to travel with their families and ox wagons through the unknown wilderness of Africa to seek out land where they could govern themselves in their own ways. They had to travel with everything they had, some scouting ahead by horseback and then moving forward with their ox wagons over mountains and through rivers where they encountered all the wild animals of Africa, ended up in skirmishing with some of the indigenous tribes. Families were fed by hunting and food they preserved beforehand. Kids went to school in the bush and were taught reading and writing from the Bible. This uh, little statue of a calfoot fro, a barefoot woman, is to commemorate the Voortrekker woman who decided not to enter the British-ruled Natal colony. They vowed to rather walk back barefoot over the mountain than to live under British rule. These uh, pointy-leaved plants are called aloes. There are hundreds of species of aloes, but some of the most common in South Africa is called the mountain aloe that are normally prevalent on slopes of mountains. These rocks built in a formation are supposed to resemble the Drakensberg Mountains, which is the mountain range on the eastern portion of the Great Escarpment. The mountains reaches over 3,400 meters in places where South Africa and Lesotho has its borders. The Drakensberg Mountains are also the source of South Africa's longest river, the Orange River, flowing westwards, and the Tugela River, flowing eastwards towards the Indian Ocean, cascading down the Drakensberg Mountain to form the largest waterfall on Earth, the Tugela Falls, at 947 meters total drop. This uh, rock sculpture here on the ground with the wagons are supposed to depict the Battle of Blood River, which was one of the bloodiest battles that was fought between the Voort trackers and the Zulus. The story goes that 10 to 12,000 Zulu Impi warriors attacked the Voort tracker Lager, or their camp, at dawn on 16 December 1838. They fought against just over 500 foot trackers. The Zulus had to cross the Ngombi River with a deep gorge. The foot trackers fought the Zulus off with cannons and gunfire. After several hours and waves of attacks, the some foot trackers left the safety of the lager to induce more breakup of the Zulu formations. They resisted for a while, but eventually started to scatter. The foot trackers pursued and uh, scattered the rest of the Zulu army. This picture here is of Andris Pretorius, 
who was the leader who led the four trackers in the Battle of Blood River against the Zulus. In 1855, the new district was formed by his son in Transvaal and was named Pretoria in honor of the general. During this time, the Zulus was ruled by one of Shaka's brothers called Dingane. He ruled over a fearless army of impis armed with spears and shields. These impis knew the land like no one else and ruled over the most fertile eastern parts of South Africa. These cactus-like trees here are called Euphorbia candelabrum. They are indigenous to eastern parts of Africa. When their branches are broken, there's a white latex-like sap coming out of it, which is very poisonous. Some indigenous hunters use the sap on their arrowheads. This structure here is called a rondavel. It's the Afrikaans name for the traditional huts that Tunguni people built from raw materials. These huts are made with a combination of stones, tree branches, reeds and straw. The floors are traditionally smoothed with cow dung. These huts will be waterproof and cool in the summer heat with a low entrance to deter anyone or anything from entering without permission. The sculpture of an elephant is uh, of a Shawu, the elephant. He was one of the largest elephants that ever roamed around the Kruger National Park. In the Kruger National Park at the Litaba Rest Camp, there is also an elephant museum. A large amphitheater which could seat probably 20,000 people is on the northeast side of the monument where regularly concerts are held. Here you can see a little bit how the food trackers used to live on the way. A food tracker camp usually had the wagons parked in a big circle. There would be wooden fences in between the wagons for security measures. Then life would be conducted inside the lager. Daily chores like cooking and washing would continue. Kids would go to school, clothes, candles and ammunition would be made and tools and wagons mended while on the way. That was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and perhaps could also learn something from it. I would really recommend anyone wanting to visit the Fort Tracker monument to definitely do so. It's a beautiful area surrounded by nature with great views over Pretoria and filled with history. In my next video I will be riding around Pretoria city center. I will visit the Union buildings and also the Klapperkop fort. Thank you for watching. If you like this video you will also like the next ones. You can press the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.